Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, we are doing some dynamics problems. We're looking at rigid body kinematics. Uh, we are into the general plane motion uh, section, and uh, this time we're going to look at a frame example. Uh, we're going to use the relative motion strategy. So if you remember, there's the relative motion strategy and the instantaneous center of rotation strategy. And uh, so for these first few videos, we'll do a couple of relative motion problems and then segue into the instantaneous center problems. So the physical system that we are looking at is uh, shown here. And we're given that the rod AB is rotating at a velocity of four radians per second in the clockwise direction, right? And from there, uh, we're given the, I mean, obviously we're given the geometry, uh, and we are asked to find the uh, angular uh, rotation of uh, bar BD and DE. So let's get to it. In general, as we're looking at these, uh, it's a good idea to start with some definition of positive, right? I like to make it ubiquitous. And so let's just define for this problem, let's say that counterclockwise is the positive direction. And the reason, by the way, if, if you ever want to know, uh, the counterclockwise is generally regarded as the positive direction by default. And the reason for that is simple. Uh, when you look at a, there we go, that looks a little bit better. When you look at a Cartesian system, you are looking from at this, right? X, Y, and the right-hand rule says that if uh, you go this way, right? If you rotate from X to Y, then Z is coming up out of the page. And uh, you'll often see in 3D drawings, you'll often see this happen, right? where Z is sort of coming out of the plane a little bit. So by default, uh, based on the uh, two-dimensional Cartesian, then it makes sense to just regard uh, anti-clockwise as the default positive, which is fine. Uh, we can do that. So uh, we are looking at a system where two bars are uh, orthogonal, right? Are AB and BD, but uh, GE is not. And what that means uh, for us in a pragmatic sense is that we are going to need to know the uh, vectors, right? So the R, if you will. So let's start there and let's say uh, AB. What is AB? That's a position vector. And uh, you can treat it like a position or a, uh, a point uh, vector. Either way, it just changes whether you've got the parentheses or um, angle braces. So going, if we define, let's say we need this, right? So X, Y, or I, J. Okay, so if we go from A to B, then we get minus 7 and 0, right? So I direction, J direction. Okay, similarly, B, D. Okay, so we're going from uh, B to D, so that would be 0 and then minus 8. And finally, DE, right? Again, going from D to E, we have 11 and minus 3. Okay, so these are our, our positional vectors. You can, I see them often drawn with R's, but it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so how are we going to do this? Let's see. Well, if we look at just the geometry, uh, then what we're going to end up with are uh, two ways, I think, to get this uh, D velocity, right? So uh, if we can define the D velocity in two different ways based on this bar and this bar, then we should be good. And so the general strategy is that if this, let's see, this guy is rotating this way, right? So 
that means that this is also going to be rotating this way. And that means what? That means that this is the velocity, this is the velocity. So this guy will be rotating the other direction. Okay, so what we can do is we'll just start from uh, bar A, B and work our way around. And I think what will happen is that once we get to D, then we'll, we'll come around to D here, and then we'll start from here and go to D, and relating them should allow us uh, to solve this. So, first things first, uh, V sub B, right? So, uh, find V sub B, okay, and what do we have on that? Uh, well, we have the angular velocity and we have the uh, vector so let's see the angular velocity is in k so what do we got we said vb uh, is going to be equal to omega ab crossed with ab right and what is that that is the ijk uh, you can leave ijk off as long as you remember where they are so omega is what zero zero and then that is in that direction so this is going to be minus four and by the way uh, i would not recommend shortcutting this process because keeping track of pluses and minuses can get to be tricky so then this is uh, minus seven zero zero we're taking the cross product so uh, the only way that we get uh, any values that are non-zeros is in the j direction, right? So that's going to be uh, minus j, right? And then it is zero uh, minus minus seven times minus four. So uh, the, these negatives cancel. So then it would be minus 28, right? And these cancel. Right, so then you just get, it is 28, and that would be inches per second in the J direction. Okay, all right, so uh, then what? Well, uh, we can then, uh, as stated, we'll find VD, right, so coming from this direction, we'll calculate VD, okay, and let's say we'll add the caveat, so we'll say from, was that BD bar, right, so the BD, okay, and what is that, that's going to be VD, it's going to be equal to omega BD crossed with BD, right? And what's that going to be? Well, omega is going to be in the k direction, right? So that is going to be 0, 0, omega BD, right? And then cross with BD, so that would be 0 and minus 8, okay? And when we do that, this, we've got, uh, this is going to be in the i direction, right? So 0 minus negative 8, so it's going to be 8 times omega BD in the I direction, right? And uh, when we, oh, I missed a part here. So the relative velocity uh, equation, I missed it because I was looking at this one, uh, the relative velocity equation is uh, this guy here, right? So uh, V sub D is actually uh, V sub B plus, and then this is the V D with respect to B, right? That's the cross product that is this guy here. So uh, we need to make sure to add in uh, V sub B. Well, V sub B is this guy here. So plus 28J, right? Okay, so now uh, we can come at uh, V sub D from the other side, right? So from E, 
So what are we going to do? We're going to find a piece of D uh, from, we'll say from DE, right? Okay, so V sub D, and again, this is uh, another place where the velocity is zero because e, uh, point E is fixed, right? So now it's just uh, V sub D with respect to E, right? And let's go ahead and write that. We'll say V sub D with respect to E. And what is that? That is omega Oh, let's see, omega, I believe that's ED. Let's say DE. Right, it's DE. Uh, crossed with, oh, give me a second here. Uh, crossed with ED, right? Because we're going from E to D, right? And so what is that? That is going to be... Uh, zero, zero, omega DE, right? And ED is going to be the reverse of this. So minus 11 and 3, okay? And when we take the cross product, we're going to get um, in the I direction, uh, zero minus 3, omega DE, that's in the I direction. Then in the J direction, we're going to say minus, and then 0 minus 11 omega DE, so plus 11 omega DE, and that's in the J direction. Okay, and let's see, I'm thinking I did something wrong here. So minus, minus, minus. Oh, there's three minuses, right. So in the J direction, you get minus uh, zero times zero minus uh, 11 uh, times this. So the, the two minuses cancel each other out there, but the incoming does not, which again, this is why I do not, I recommend avoiding uh, canceling these out. So. We have our two equations here for uh, v sub d, right? So, right this way, we can say v sub d uh, equals, and that equals this, and it also equals this, right? So we just set these equal to each other, and uh, what do we get? We get eight omega v d. Uh, this is i. So let's let's group the i's together, uh, and so that is what equals. So what do we say? We say i direction here. Okay, equals this i direction. So minus three omega d e. Right. Well, that's not very helpful. Not yet. Uh, let's look in the j direction. What does that give us? J direction, 28 equals minus 11 omega DE. Ah, there we go. So omega DE equals minus 11 28. Right, what is that? That's a little bit less than half, right? So minus 11 divided by 28. And that is, gives us an omega DE equals minus 0.392. Did I? Oh, I did that completely backwards. I don't know why. I when I did it in the practice problem, I did it backwards too. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's 28 uh, over 11. Uh, and for some reason, those particular numbers, um, I have no idea why. All right, so omega DE equals minus 2 point, it says 5, 4, 5, 4, 5. So let's just go with 5, 4, 5. 
0.545 radians per second. Okay, so we define the positive direction this way. So this must mean that this is a negative direction. And since we impose that uh, onto our system, then uh, we need to be directionally specific, right? Okay, so then we can. what we can do is just add this to, we'll substitute this into the I direction, and uh, this gives us that omega BD is equal to minus 3 eighths of omega DE, right? And when we run that through the calculator, we get that omega BD is equal to uh, 0 0.955 Okay, and it's negative, so it's going the other direction, and there we are. Well, hold on, let's put the units in. Be rigorous about this, 955 radians per second, and that's going to be in the anti-clockwise direction, so the direction we call positive. Now, uh, for our handy-dandy discussion statement, we say, okay, does that make sense? Well, if we look back at the geometry, uh, we can just look at the direction, right? So we can say DE. We, we were given that uh, omega AB was in the clockwise direction, right? And by looking at the problem, we realized that, oh, DE is also going to be in the clockwise and uh, BD is going to be the anti-clockwise direction, and that's what we found. So I feel pretty good about our responses, our, our answers, and uh, how we got there. So I hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.